It is a very somber Monday night on the Oklahoma Drill podcast tonight, folks. The New York Jets are coming off a soul-crushing 10-3 to loss to the New England Patriots on a last-second punt return in Foxborough that was all set up by some, some absolutely horrendous play from Zach Wilson to the point where there's a serious, serious problem at one Jets drive if things do not change soon and change, quite honestly, in my opinion, by the end of this week because this locker room is teetering on the edge and it's going to go overboard if things continue the way they're going right now. The offense only got, I believe it was two total yards in the second half. That is <laughs> beyond inexcusable. Absolutely beyond inexcusable. So let's not pull any punches. Let's not waste any time, Matt. I want to get your full un- uh, unedited opinion of Zach Wilson's play in the, this game yesterday against the Patriots. Don't hold anything back because at this point he doesn't deserve it. You're absolutely right. You said two total yards. That is the most horrifying number I've heard in a while in relation to Zach Wilson in this offense. Oh my God, that is atrocious. And I was like, I I was okay with the idea of us losing because I've said this time and time again before, like I'm all totally on board with the, the coin flip. So we we're supposed to lose this game anyways, but the manner that we lost, it just kind of, rips out your soul, and then pisses on it. It was just that bad. Seeing our possibly franchise quarterback really just stink it up so bad that there's absolutely no confidence in him by pretty much anyone, really. Uh, even maybe most of the people in the in the locker room uh, or even in the coaching staff. I, I, they're that shocked by what they saw that they're really evaluating everything. Uh, which is what Sala said today. They're evaluating everything, and they should, because what Zach did yesterday was to the level that, that I haven't seen in a very long time. And we've we've seen him have bad games, and then he usually comes back and has a competent game. And then, every, what do we do with that? We 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 see this time and time again. It's it's a roller coaster ride of lows and highs with him. And how how much can we take of that before we go mad with this this back and forth of is he the guy? He's horrible, bench him for life, throw him off the bridge, he's done. Uh or you know what? It's still in his second season. He hasn't completed uh, in enough time on the field to really show us what he really is. And it's I I don't know like I, you you look at what we did with with Darnold and Sanchez and I feel like we waited way too long to figure out what they really were and in the end I feel like they showed us exactly what they were a lot earlier and we stuck with them anyways and to the detriment of the team and to the detriment of the fans as well so. It's hard because you don't want to give up on the number two pick in his second year. That just seems counterproductive in nature. But at the same time, in reality, it's probably the best move. Whether it's the best move this week, I who knows. But I, it was it was that bad where it's got you questioning just about everything. Yeah, there is there is a certain level of bad. That is beyond struggling, that is beyond failing, that is outright incompetence to the level of not being an NFL starting quarterback, period. And it's not you're not growing anymore. You're not gaining anything. Zach Wilson is not getting any better by playing the way he is right now. He is not gaining any experience that is going to bode anything well for him for the future. He is absolutely and 110 percent crumbling and imploding. And it is it, it is DEFCON 5 at this point. It, it really, really is. And you're right. They've spent so long over the years waiting to see what they had. But this is the difference, Matt. And this is where I really want to put things in perspective with this game and with Wilson in particular and why I think it's so important that Sala needs to address this position this week. And he absolutely cannot let Zach Wilson start next week against the Chicago Bears, in my opinion. I think he's going to absolutely lose the locker room if he does. First things first. Those teams before, those Jets teams of old, when you're waiting on Mark Sanchez, when you're waiting on a Geno Smith with no receivers and no running backs in his second year, and you sign Michael Vick to compete, and then you have the whole fiasco with Fitzpatrick, 
and you have Darnold who you bring in Gase and you're, you're hoping that Gase is going to make him better. And he completely and totally takes away any of the development that Jeremy Bates had with him as a rookie. Those teams were not equipped to win. Those teams were floundering and you could afford to be patient because you knew you weren't going anywhere. You could afford to be a little extra hopeful because the rest of your team wasn't ready to win anyway. And obviously you want your quarterback to succeed as fast as possible. But if you have an investment in a guy that you really hope that you can work out and the rest of your team isn't up to the same caliber of play either, it buys you a little more leeway and you can fit in some more excuses. I think Darnold, whether he would have completely worked out or been successful or otherwise is irrelevant, but I can guarantee that if the Jets hire anybody else other than Adam Gase uh, to start the 2016 to 2018, 19 season, excuse me, to start the 2019 season. I guarantee Sam Darnold would have been a better quarterback for the Jets in those two years than he ended up being. I guarantee if Geno Smith doesn't get punched a few weeks before <laughs> the season starts in 2015 with the receivers that they had on that team, with the way the offensive line played that year, with the way the defense was playing that year, I fully believe Geno Smith would have been better with the Jets than he might have been before. And as we're seeing this season in Seattle, it's not like Geno Smith ever completely fell out of the league. He's playing some pretty darn good football with the Seahawks right now. Mark Sanchez, you had a team that was winning, that got to the AFC Championship, and I believe it was his second year, and was a game away from going to the Super Bowl. And you had the wins behind it with Sanchez under helm to kind of buy yourself some more time and a little more leeway. At the end of Sanchez's second season, the Jets were a game out of the Super Bowl. You're not thinking that your guy's completely and totally washed. After the offensive line got older and the defense started to get a little less talented, things started to change and things started to rely on Sanchez more and he couldn't hold up. At that point, that's why it takes so long. This is a completely different scenario, Matt. This team is ready to win right now. This team, this defense, this offensive talent, despite an offensive line that's reeling with injuries, a running back room that's really, really missing Brees Hall, and a receiver room that has talent but could really use Corey Davis back, this is still a very talented team. And this is the, the story of the game for me. The Jets' defense did everything they possibly could have to win this game. They got a little bit of luck. They got some help from some New England wind and maybe some Nick Folk, you know, green still in his heart, missing two field goals. But the Patriots had 11 total possessions yesterday against the Jets. Only one of them ended in scoring with a field goal. <laughs> Their only other score was a punt return touchdown at the end of the game. Whether you want to call that a possession or not, I don't think technically it would count as an offensive possession. Out of 11 total offensive possessions, they got one score. The only time they went forward on fourth down, they turned the ball over and got stopped on fourth down. Nick Folk misses two field goals. You try your best as a defense. The Jets offense had 12 offensive possessions against the Patriots yesterday. Only one of their drives went for a score. Every other one of their drives ended in a punt, except for a one play eight yard drive to go into halftime right before the end of the half. <laughs> that was embarrassing also. Which was also an, an embarrassment of a of a situation to try and double dip at the end of half and do the, do the Patriots what they've always done to you. So you take that drive away because it doesn't really count. And it's 11 drives, even on even. And both offenses only scored once. If Zach Wilson does anything more to help make this offense go, the Jets win that game. And they know it. And this is the key for me, Matt. When you're taken second overall and you're the number two pick in the draft and you're supposed to be the franchise quarterback when the chips are down is when you need to be at your best not at your worst when you're missing offensive linemen when your third string right guard is starting and you're having a free agent off the street right tackle that's in his third or, or second or third start and your receiving room is hurting and your running back room is hurting and you're the second pick in the draft that's when you go and elevate the team. If Zach Wilson cannot be a player that can at the very least stay serviceable, if not efficient, and build the team up around him and is going to be a player that crumbles if everything is not perfectly set up for him to thrive, that's not good enough. That's not what an NFL quarterback does. That's not what an elite top-of-the-league quarterback does for a team. And so I'm at this point. Garrett Wilson's emotions said it all for me. For a rookie receiver that knows he's good, that 
is very talented and knows it, that is very passionate about winning and cares about winning and cares about this team succeeding. I, there wasn't anything that I got from Garrett's emotions that said, I'm upset because I could have had a really great game and Zach was screwing me over. It was, we need to be better. We can win. We know we're good. We have an opportunity to change the narrative. Look at how much we've done already and we know we can be even better. And it's the same guy over and over letting everyone else down. You can't let that slide. There's been multiple instances of defensive players liking tweets in uh, relation to being upset at Zach Wilson for not taking responsibility. To, to play as poorly as he did again for the nth time this season and to have a, a softball question lobbed in front of you to just mm-hmm. take accountability and say, I need to be better. I know I'm, I, I really messed up and I'm going to do everything I can that I let everyone down today and that's on me and I need to be better and I'm the quarterback. That's my job. And I'm going to make sure that my teammates know it. You get a, a, a belt high fastball to, to go and, and win with the media and win with your teammates. And you deny taking any blame or responsibility. Like I said, 11 on 11 possessions for both teams. Both offenses only scored once. Yes, Zach Wilson, you let your defense down. You 110% let your defense down. And for to, to have the arrogance, quite honestly, and the, the blindness to the situation to look reporters in the face and say, no, I don't think I let them down. I think, you know, everyone needs to work and be better. And there's other things that go on that you guys outside don't necessarily know. I don't need to be in that building to know that Zach Wilson lost that game. I don't. I have the game. I have the film. I have the tape. I can watch that for myself. It's blatantly obvious. And for a guy that gets lauded as the film junkie and the work, uh, the workaholic who's always trying to be better and always only cares about football and only cares about being a quarterback and his craft and, and all he wants to do is get better. Man, he never gets better. <laughs> he never gets better. He never improves. He looks just as l- lackadaisical, just as confused, just as easily rattled as he did as a rookie, his mechanics fall apart at a moment's notice. He doesn't look anything like he did at BYU. He's destroyed. And, and I'm quite honestly at the point where for Robert Sala, the rest of this team is going to start questioning him. If he keeps giving Zach chances that he would never give anybody else. Elijah Moore re- threw, a, threw a fit and requested a trade and was immediately benched for a week and didn't even travel to Denver. Zach Wilson's had two games of downright inexcusable quarterbacking play. Not bad horrendous and inexcusable and the rest of the team is starting to show emotion because of it and if he doesn't face any consequences and the only thing that comes out of this this week is Salah saying we have we're open to the option you know everything's on the table I'm not committing to Zach as the starter if he says that and nothing happens by the end of the week those are just words and it doesn't mean a damn thing you have to make a move right now Robert Salah or risk losing this locker room that respects the hell out of you you can destroy your team right now. This is the most pivotal moment of his head coaching career. And I'm really curious to see what happens because I'm, I don't think he has any other choice, but to go with Mike white for this next week. And even if Mike white is just as terrible, you showed that Zach could not be uh, treated any different than anybody else for playing as horrendously as he was. If any other player on this team played that poorly twice in a row against the same team and a division opponent with all of that on the line, they'd never see the field again. And this should not be any different. See, I agree with everything you just said because he isn't like, but the, this is the thing. He isn't like any other player. He plays a position that's unlike every other position. Yeah. Moore had his fit and he was canned for a day or for a game and then kind of put in the doghouse after that. And now only making his way back now, but at the same time, he was in a wide receiver room. That's kind of stacked. At the same time, Zach is part of a quarterback room that's kind of not stacked. You have Mike White, Strebler, Flacco. These aren't exactly a, a bunch of studs where they have the leeway to, to bench him and be like, okay, you learn your lesson, and here we have some studs that can take your place and do the job and make you seem irrelevant even if you're not playing. Uh, I don't think it's like that with, with the quarterback, and I feel like they still – have a little bit of faith in Zach. I don't think they're giving up on Zach just yet. But that's not to say that they are treating this lightly. I don't think so at all. I think they are putting a leash on him so tight 
that even if he if he sniffs a, a game anything like uh, yesterday or even against New England the first time, they are going to pull that leash so hard and put Mike White in uh, that it, it it won't even matter that they didn't choose Mike White to start in the first place. It's more who do they want in the future? They they look at what their options are for the future right now. If we go a free agent quarterback, we're most likely going to have to overspend. If we go to draft a quarterback, well then, all right, that means we this have isn't to start the class all to do over. it. Not this year. Not this year, especially not unless you're going to be at the top of the class. Not where we're going to be picking. Most likely won't be. So, what are our options really? It's either Zach. Maybe we keep him around and see if he's the guy. And if we do that, that means we can't really give up on him. Uh, but then again, I don't think a benching totally means giving up on him. So I, I can see that. But at the same time, I it, nothing that these guys have shown say that they're willing to do this at the hi- the highest level with a quarterback. I, I just don't think they're willing to do that right away. Uh, but I do think that they will be willing now to bench him in game if things get as bad as they were. Yeah, I think that's very possible. And as much as I personally believe you're going to send a really poor message to that locker room, if you go through this entire week and you go through the film as a team on today, which I'm sure they did, and probably tomorrow as well, and you're in the offensive meeting room and the entire offense is there and it's clip after clip of Zach missing wide open targets and it's clip after clip of Zach not reading a play correctly. It's clip after clip of Zach not feeling pressure properly. It's clip after clip after clip of Zach throwing into coverage. And at another week where his, his the amount of dropped interceptions he's had this year is a staggering, staggering. Mm-hmm. His numbers should be significantly worse than they already are, and they're already extremely poor. And I, I just cannot think this is the point for me above all else. I don't think it's about having guys behind him that could be better. It's about showing the rest of the team that Zach Wilson does not get a pass for playing to the level of incompetence that doesn't deserve to be on an NFL field for anybody else on the team. If anybody else on the team was playing half as poorly as Zach Wilson, there would be a next man up. Bryce Hall, for Christ's sake, a year ago is in a situation where Every fan in the world is going, Bryce Hall is such an underrated corner and he's not giving up anything in coverage. And, you know, he's going to be a star the next year and the Jets defense could be good and and they just need a difference. And for as much as people lauded Bryce Hall, the Jets go out and sign DJ Reed and draft Sauce Gardner and Bryce Hall's basically been an active this entire year. And you're telling me that Zach gets to play this poorly and not face any amount of a challenge or a competition whatsoever. And you're going to assume, well, Maybe if we put the pressure on him, that that's going to be the difference this week. And all of a sudden, he's going to wake up and play better against a much worse defense. And that's going to make everything okay and smooth everything over in the locker room. I don't think so. I don't. And I think if you play him again and he's immediately terrible, you have to bench him. But you're going to have players in that locker room going, we knew this was going on. Why would you think this would be any different? What 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 have you learned that's going to make you think this would be any different than how it's been? Are you telling me that with how good the Jets defense is, that Zach Wilson's absolutely lighting it up in practice every week? With what no we're idea. seeing on Sundays, with what you're seeing know, on Sundays, though. can you can can you honestly tell me that you believe in your heart that Mike White doesn't look better in practice than Zach Wilson right now? I I can't say that. I'm sh- I would be absolutely shocked because the level of poor where Zach Wilson is at right now is at zero. And if Mike White's a 10, that's still better. That, that's something I'm very curious about is what does he look like in practice? It because, can't be good. It can't be good. Like in, in my head, I'm picturing him being like lights, like a uh, night and day difference between game Zach and practice Zach. Practice Zach, he's relaxed and confident. And he's just playing catch with his friends. And then when the game is on, the lights are on. Uh, and the the fans are screaming. He, all of a sudden, every single thing he's practiced, every single thing he knows to be true as a quarterback, it just leaves his head. His eyes just roll back like a shark eating. It, it's that I, I just don't know what they see in practice, and I, I would be very curious to to find out. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I I, I that, that's the only thing I could think of is that he is night and day different in practice. 
And that's what they have confidence in. And that's what they've had confidence in in the past leading up to this point. Uh, and probably the only thing that has prevented them from switching to Mike White or Flack or anybody else before this. Uh, I, 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 I think now is enough. Enough is enough. They can't just rest their their laurels on on practice, Zach. Because even if Zach is lights out in practice, we know what the result is on the field during the games. It doesn't mean anything what he looks it, like in practice. It, it and with how he's playing all. right now, I can't even believe that he's that good. He might be better, but I, how good can he be in with how good the Jets' defense is? To where if you're playing, you know, starters on starters in a, you know, any sort of a game period and you're really trying to get your defense prepared, you're telling me that Zach Wilson's dominating our defense? That that he's that he's out there playing so fantastic that there's no reason to challenge him whatsoever. That's what I'm like. This is my point of it goes so far beyond for the locker room, because I don't think Zach Wilson's out there throwing lasers all over the field in practice. If he was, people would be saying that. If he was, people would make that argument. You would have teammates defending him going, you know, I know it's tough in the games, but you guys aren't here where we're on the practice field and we're, we're going through reps and he's sharp and he's on it. And, and we know that he can get to that point. No one's saying that at all. No one's coming to his defense. No one is trying to back him up right now. He's lost this locker room. It's over. This It's going to take a time away and it's going to take someone else coming in to heal the wounds and patch things over and buy time because this team is completely and totally turned on him and it's it can't continue and to to answer a question you said earlier and i want to give you the opportunity to get back on this too but what do we do for the future where do we go from here what are we looking at next year you go for a cheap veteran stopgap that could provide competition so if it's gardner Minshew, sure if Jameis Winston gets out of uh, New Orleans and you could possibly sign him, sure. I don't think you swing for the top of the fences and try and get the most expensive guy possible. I think with the way this team is constructed right now that you don't need anyone to be a superstar and win and be the caliber of team that you want to be. I think you just need better than what you're getting right now. And so I'm, this is, you can't continue. That's, that's my end point. This game was so poor and so inexcusable and so much worse on film than I thought it was going to be. And it was already bad to start with. This is enough. Enough is enough. Like you said, if you're the second pick in the draft, these are the games that you're supposed to do enough to win regardless. All Zach Wilson had to do was anything. And the Jets win this game, and he couldn't even do that once in 11 tries. That's unacceptable. 